Um, good morning. I'm so glad to see you. Um, my name is Mariette DeCristina, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Scientific American and also the Director of Editorial and Publishing for Nature Research Group. Um, I'm just delighted, absolutely delighted, to, um, to say that today we're going to have a discussion, uh, an idea, an insight with Duncan Haldane, who is uh, this past year's one of the winners of the Nobel Prize in Physics with David Thaulis and J. Michael Kosterlitz. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about science, about inspiration. And um, I'm going to have a little fun while we're doing it, I think. So, um, so Professor Haldane, let, let's start back a little bit, because not everybody's Mm -hmm. maybe quite as familiar with physics as you are. I don't think many people are familiar with physics. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're probably right. Um, but let's start with, you know, you know, why science for you? You know, think about, go back to, think about when you were, when you were younger mm -hmm. and what drew you to, to the physics in the first place? Well, I guess I always had a, my parents were medical people and they had a kind of great belief in science was the answer to the world's problems and the future. So. It was a kind of propaganda for science in our <laughs> house, but uh, I didn't end up going into medicine like my brother. And I, I was uh, at school, I guess I liked science, uh, geology and rocks and things, mm -hmm. and chemistry. I didn't particularly like physics until really? and it was only the, uh, there was a, well, the, the physics teacher also doubled as the sports teacher in, <laughs> oh. <laughs> in the early part. But the last year I had a very good physics teacher. And before that I'd, I'd loved chemistry and uh, doing all the kind of things in, in school labs that mm -hmm. are completely ruled out by health and safety officers today. <laughs> you, you cooked all these things and interesting orange chemicals came turned into green ash and came out of tubes and things. But uh, My kind of chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, uh, there's something about physics. Uh, uh, it's uh, got a simplicity in it and um, underlying it, and it's... I guess I, I, I probably it was the enthusiasm of a teacher that, that communicated it to me, which I hadn't really even thought about physics before then. Mm -hmm. I actually remember having a physics teacher who, who really got me interested yeah. in the topic as well. So yeah. I, can, I can see how that would get you started. But yeah. then uh, you, you uh, from there, decided that that was an interesting thing to pursue. So how well, did you? Well, and I then went, I, went, I went to uh, college and uh, yeah. did in, it was a Cambridge and he did a general science called natural sciences. So I did, mm -hmm. did a, phys, a bit of physics, uh, chemistry, biology, math. But then uh, I had to go in the lab and uh, in the biology lab, I remember having an experience where I were having to put some nasty chemicals on some nice, uh, nice looking mold to mutate it. Uh -huh. And you did it in those days with a mouth pipette. Oh. So I sucked this stuff up and <laughs> Swallowed it. And oh. I decided I was, I'm quite clumsy, so I decided uh, maybe I don't want to be involved in any kind of experiments with with chemicals or anything with radioactive materials because I get contaminated. So I somehow went into nice, clean uh, theoretical physics after that. So I like the idea that uh, so, since you're, you had a lot of uh, medical people in the family and you wanted to avoid chemistry, that you you almost chose physics as a, as a start <laughs> as a, almost a, a rebellion in a certain way. Um, did you, did you always know that it would be science? Probably from the, probably there was a general kind of encouragement that science was really a great future for mankind. Uh -huh. <laughs> it would solve all the world's problems. I don't know if that's, that's true, but uh, it's, doing, it's both creating problems and solving problems. Yeah, yeah I think that's an interesting, interesting nature yeah. of science in yeah. general, isn't it? So, so physics, and then a particular branch of physics. Can you... Tell us how you, ed you, you, you study quantum mechanics, which is a, a couple of pretty powerful sounding yeah. words. Let's tell people what, what, does it, what does it mean, quantum mechanics, in well, the area. So physics is a fundamental science. Yeah, and you're um, in theoretical, which is yeah. described with the maths and well, so on. Well, quantum mechanics is the real, uh, I mean, it, it, it seems to be very different. It describes the world in a very different way from the way we, uh, understand, with the way we experience it. Mm. But because but, uh, generally it works, it, it completely controls things on the atomic scale of things. But um, it's the fundamental, it's actually the correct description of the world around us. You would say and, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's something we've known the laws of quantum mechanics uh, for nearly 90 years now. It's all found around 1928, 30. And um, uh, it, it's, 
just because we've known the laws of quantum mechanics for so long doesn't actually mean we really understand it. Right? Many people have tried to come up with experiments to invalidate quantum mechanics, and it's always triumphed. And, um, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's something that we understand formally. By, we know the equations are there. Uh, but it, it's, so it's been coming up with tremendous surprises in the last few years. So you, you've mentioned a couple of things here that I just want to pick apart for yeah. the audience. So mechanics, obviously, we can think about generically as how things work. And yes. quantum is at very, very small scales. Yes. And there's been a, a difference in, in, uh, in science wrought by quantum physics, you know, yeah. quantum mechanics, because in the past we'd studied things at larger scales. And the reason I'm introducing this concept is yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about the, mm -hmm. the interfaces. So the way the physics works, or looks like it works, at larger scales and at smaller scales sometimes looks a little different. Yeah, the, you don't, look, well, if you can't understand atoms or, or molecules or chemistry without quantum mechanics, that's why it was, it was the big problem of the time at the beginning of the last century to, and it's what, and basically uh, uh, we don't we don't experience it because we don't see at the atomic scale. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can't understand, you can't understand why you quantum mechanics is explains why you don't fall through the floor when you stand on it, even though the atoms are made of 99.99 percent empty space, and. Um, you know, the, but of course, we think we don't fall through the floor because the floor is solid mm -hmm. <laughs> and it exerts a force on our shoe. But uh, that force comes from the fact that, that electrons don't, two electrons don't like to be in the same place for an important quantum mechanical principle, the Pauli exclusion principle. And uh, that's what really stabilizes. So we can't really understand matter at all without quantum mechanics. So when, we, yeah. when I put my hand on this table, the table's electrons don't want my hand electrons yeah, the, in their the, business. They, yeah. they, they're ex, they're ex, they, 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 exclude, they exclude you. They say they, they've got, they've, they've, they've taken the space over and too bad for your, too bad for, you. too, can't put my too hand bad in for there. the other electrons in your hand. They can't come in. So you <laughs> study a particular area of quantum mechanics and I want to, I want to talk a little bit about yeah. the topological areas mm -hmm. and what led you to your Nobel Prize. So how, how did that adventure begin in theoretical physics? Well, I think uh, these things always come about through accidents, basically. Uh, um, I think there's lots of things, as we said, we haven't really fully understood what quantum mechanics allows to happen. And um, initially, I was investigating a, a very kind of toy model system in, in the late, in the, in fact, even, as far back as the 30s, um, people started trying to make uh, models for, for matter, for, for solid matter, and things like magnetism. And initially, they started making very sort of toy models. Uh, it's quite complicated to understand a, a, a full magnetic structure, so they looked at just a little, little line of atoms along one direction, one dimension. And this was thought to be, uh, in that period, these were kind of toy models. You did homework problems before you went up to the, the, uh, full, the full problem of three-dimensional uh, crystals and things. And, but it turns out that the quantum mechanics effects are actually much become much more important in, 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 in things which are confined either to two-dimensional surfaces or lines. So in fact, these, these low-dimensional systems are kind of even, in some sense, more, more interesting. because. So we, in two yeah. dimensions, let's, let's look back yeah. this up. So if I yeah. think of it like a sheet of paper, yeah. in two dimensions, we're able to see effects a little differently than we are yeah. when you're looking at it in other ways. Yeah, because the, the fluctuations due to quantum mechanics are stronger. Uh -huh. and. Um, uh, so, in the 70s, people started to actually look at uh, organic chain molecules, and they started to make materials which could be described by these kind of things which had been regarded purely as mathematical exercises. Mm -hmm. and so, so they started to be more, much more interested in this in this problem. And uh, uh, basically, what I was in looking at a, a different, a slightly different language to, to look at these problems in that gave you a different perspective from mm -hmm. the standard one. And uh, found out just by, by, by a tremendous surprise that what people had sort of concluded uh, about these systems was basically wrong. Mm -hmm. So you uh, had, there's, there's the insight, right? So yeah. you take a different perspective yeah. on a problem everybody's working on around this yes, yeah. single plane. 
And you it was saw actually a single different. line in single fact, line. the first one, yeah. And uh, yeah, basically, it's a, it was an interesting kind of sociological thing. There was a, 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 long, a very old mathematical solution of one of these toy models that had been around, but it was actually, uh, uh, no one really understood it. <laughs> it was actually a guess by Hans Bethe, who was, okay. uh, who went on after that to do tremendous things in nuclear physics and uh, explain why the sun shines. But he actually started off with these kind of toy models. Mm -hmm. And Beta's uh, solution took about 60 or 70 years to be understood because uh, it, he, it, it, it was a kind of luck that he lucked onto this thing too. And it is superficially confirmed. It, the answers from his mathematical solution looked like the, looked like, uh, the kind of more more uh, hand-waving and uh, but in understandable kind of theory that people had applied before. So they, they had an incorrect theory, and there was, a, there was apparent evidence that looked as if it supported it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a complete accident. Just, just so accident. so just people's wrong. opinions can be, I'm sure there's plenty of things that we know about that we assume that we understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, then we may have quite the wrong idea and so the, it's yeah. quite a, but it's a very great surprise when you when you find that what everyone believes just isn't correct right and yeah <laughs> that is a surprise so let, let's talk yeah. just a little bit more about so this is an area eventually became known as have I got this right topological phase transition well it's topological is that, where does that yeah. where does that a topological Come in. matter, I guess. So. Topological matter. So let, yeah. can, we, can we explain to people what topological matter is and maybe okay. give them an example or two? I think you brought a couple yeah, of things here right. to, well, to share. To, well, topology is a branch of pure mathematics, okay. okay? And it hadn't had any role in quantum mechanics before this mm -hmm. uh, thing. Before you were. Yeah. So topology is, uh, I mean, like here are the examples. There's a, there's a famous thing in topology which is, tells you that a, that a coffee cup and uh, I guess a bagel. <laughs> now I've got a better bagel here because this is very small, but the, the, ba the big example in topology is that, that this object and uh, the bagel with a, are both the same topologically because they basically have a kind of hole in the middle. The hole in the middle of the bagel is now the handle of the cup here. And there's a famous film that everyone takes off YouTube, all the people working in topological materials now, and they, they show a coffee cup continuously changing into a bagel and back again. <laughs> so Let's it's look a, at that. But um, the bagel has a hole in it, and the interesting thing about this is that uh, holes are kind of, they come in units. There's, you can have one hole, two holes, no holes, but you can't have 1.2 holes or 0.6 holes. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that there's some properties which uh, uh, just depend on, on on, on whether you have a hole or not, or two holes. Right? Okay. The, up till then, most, most things in physics uh, required things to be very perfect. You know, if Intel makes a, a, a computer chip on a silicon wafer, the, a speck of dust on the wafer will kind of ruin it, right? right. Well, it, it turned out some measurements showed up in the, in the, around 1980 um, that something called the fractional, qu the, in, the integer quantum Hall effect where you measured some resistance, and it was exactly uh, a fundamental number, which turned out to be uh, 25,000 ohms, which is a ratio of the charge of the electron squared and Planck's constant times an, a whole number. And it was unprecedented that some measurement was always the same number to about six or seven digits. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a topological property. The, the, the quantum state can be classified in a similar way to the shape of these cups. Uh, it's not really, um, of course, it's not the physical surface. The, the, the big breakthrough in topology in mathematics comes from uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, who, who discovered an amazing formula that you could actually work out the number of holes in an object by doing a complicated integral. <laughs> So there's, yeah. so there's a, yeah. a way to calculate. Yeah, you do an integral of the curvature over the surface of the... And then you can figure it out. And then this gives you an... He was just amazed this always gives you a whole number, which told you how many holes were on the surface. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, an analogous thing, it's not a physical surface that you're integrating a curvature over, and it's not... Uh, uh, not the not the actual curvature of, of, uh, of, the, of the surface. I mean, this is a surface with... Uh, has it? approximately spherical curvature. Um, but uh, it's a, math a mathematical analogy of Gauss's formula. Okay, so let's back up a bit. Yeah. So you got us 
to where the mathematically yeah. the donut and the cup are they're the same different. because yeah. they, well they have a yeah. hole, they both yeah. have a hole right and they and they're different bend, and, this and they're different, different from that that's correct because there's no hole yeah. in that and the regular the, the normal matter that non topological matter is basically got no holes in it now the mm -hmm. stability of the thing is that if you if i squeeze this a little bit i'm going to change its shape but i'm not going to put a hole in it i have to do a lot of violence to to put a hole in it. Similarly, if I squeeze the bagel, it's not going to remove the hole. Mm -hmm. So the properties that depend on topology are much, much uh, more stable. Mm -hmm. they, they're not affected by dirt, right, or by, by, by the making things rough. The way that single chip was affected by yeah, a grain that's of right. dust. So it, that turned out to be uh, a remarkable property. So it's a different kind of matter, and it had just different properties. Uh, uh, which were why it was unexpected in the first place, right? So, and you, so you've you spent a bit of time studying these, this topological matter. Well, we didn't know it was topological at the time. It turned uh -huh. out it, it was just different. Uh -huh. And uh, the interesting thing that emerged is that the difference, the, the boundary between normal matter and this topological matter, um, there has to be kind of interesting stuff happening on the boundary. Mm -hmm. And no one had noticed that before, and this has emerged, and uh, all kinds of strange things can happen. For example, in a two-dimensional system, uh, you can have signals that propagate one way around the edge, with like one way, one way like light or so signals could move in one way only, like a one-way street, and that has amazing implications for. Uh, there's, there's a lot of hope that one can uh, harness that technologically because. Mm -hmm. If you put a kink in the pathway, the, 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 the signal can't get reflected backwards. It just mm -hmm. finds its way around. So, um, so for example, traffic uh, flows in a road nicely because you have the cars moving on in one direction on one side and the other direction on the other side. So if everyone was moving without a, a rule of the road, there'd be a big mess. Mm -hmm. Well, in a, in, in a usual piece of uh, wire, the electrons can move in both directions. Right? Mm -hmm. So to actually have something where you f physically, where the signal gets separated spatially, uh, which is something that happens in these topological materials, is, is quite amazing. So there's so all, kinds of, uh, all kinds of extremely unexpected properties that no one would have dreamed right. of turned up to be manifested by, by these strange, by uh, these strange... Topolo topological matter. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I can understand. Well, first of all, I know it takes a long time to understand yeah. at, a, at a fundamental level, yeah. like wh what you're looking at. And you, you said there are a lot of uh, a lot of strange properties mm -hmm. of these. Is, is, there, is there anything that, um, I know it takes a long time, I mean, for instance, yeah. we all, uh, you know, when, when Einstein was working on relativity, we didn't know that that would be used in the yeah. GPS in our phones 100 years ago, right? So could, can, you, can you speak to us a little bit about, I mean, this, are, we, are we still at the entirely fundamental understanding part of the, the, the Nobel work that you've done, or is there, are we seeing some, some ways that it, can be used in the uh, in the everyday world yet? Well, uh, this stuff has been growing tremendously. I mean, I, I just uncovered the tip of an iceberg, and yeah. of course, other people have gone on and uncovered more of this thing. And it, other once once. I mean, it's just uh, yeah. interesting in the first place, uh, yeah. right? But uh, the, it's in, it's really fueled. Uh, there was a, a very interesting proposal um, that it could be used for top, for quantum computers. Ah. So this stability, one of the big problems with a quantum computer is it's very uh, fragile. The information that you try to store in a quantum state is very fragile against being uh, decoherence, which means it, inter it interacts with the environment and the information is kind of lost. But if you can encode the information in this topologically stable way that it's unaffected by. So let's back up. Quantum yeah. computer, let's yeah. say what it's good at doing or maybe good at doing because of the unique properties at the quantum yeah. scale. and. You just mentioned it can be fragile, which is called decoherence, because yes. it can be disturbed yeah. easily. But what would, it, what would it be good at doing, different from? Well, a qu quantum computer, in principle, does uh, a whole lot of calculations at the same time. Right. <laughs> While a classical computer just does one calculation, then another calculation, then so another calculation. So this has calculation. been a, yeah. a, large, an yeah. in, a large area of interest for uh, quite a while. That's right. So uh, of course, uh, uh, one, uh, one can one, what Feynman proposed this originally as a way to simulate quantum matter, which is a kind of circular argument, but it would be very useful. But uh, uh, if one could get a quantum computer to work, it would, for example, be able to factor large numbers very easily. And the NSA, the National Security Agency, 
is investing in this because they want to know if people can make a quantum computer, it's going to break all the, all the, all codes. the codes, for example. Right. So um, I'm not sure that's that interesting as a scientific idea, why but you want to break it, the codes, yeah. but I find it more interesting to simulate of course you'd scienti want to know. scientific calculations yeah, rather than the hacking. The but uh, but yeah. yes, one could do, a, it's not really the clear what one, what one, one all, the, all the things one can do with it, but uh, anyway, it's, it's viewed as the future of, uh, of computing. Uh, so, so understanding now, I'm going to say this incorrectly, but yeah. the, the, shape, the, the, the area that you're studying is more stable in certain ways yeah. at those yeah. interfaces between classical and quantum. Have I got that right? Well, the, well you, 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 yeah, you, the, you explain it. It's, you have interesting extra degrees of freedom at the, at the interfaces, and also you can have little vortices. Uh, in it. And in fact, Alexei Kitaev, uh, who's now at Santa Barbara, proposed around 2000 that you could make, that you could make a stable quantum computer with, out of topological of matter. Yeah. And then, uh, which is very, still, still it was at a theoretical level then, but um, a lot of topological ma matter suddenly got discovered uh, mm -hmm. around uh, 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. So some of these old toy models that I'd and others had worked on, they'd been very theoretically interesting, but and some examples had been found in extremely high magnetic fields that weren't practical for, for much. Uh, but uh, suddenly, uh, it was realized that extensions of, the, of my ideas by others to uh, three-dimensional systems also worked. And then people realized, my gosh, there's all these materials around that we never looked at closely enough, and they turned out to be topological matter. And once you've got uh, fancy mathematics, you've got little kind of toy models that you can do calculations with and actually show that something's possible, and then real materials, those, those things come together. It's a, fueled a huge explosion of this. And in fact, in fact, Microsoft are now putting quite a lot of uh, effort into funding, I think it's called Majorana Wires, which is a, um, a proposal for uh, topological properties of, of some little uh, indium antimonide whiskers, which kind of grow, little crystals that grow like a hair. And you can make, a, and there's a very interesting proposal for that you can do this quantum so let's let, let's it, get us. Yeah. I mean, I'm always interested in how long it takes. I mean, obviously, even if, like me, uh, we're, we're not all quantum uh, yeah. physicists here, we, we're getting the sense of how complicated it is to tease out the you know the, the different properties. When did you begin the work that led to your Nobel Prize? So how how long well, is the arc so far? And you said it was the tip of an iceberg, well, did, and it's there begun were really to explode. two pieces of work which I didn't understand were connected in any way. Uh -huh. In fact, right? they just two different kinds of topological matter. One in one dimension in around 1980, uh -huh. and the other one around 1988. And I didn't even see the connection. It's just that later people have realized brought this to a realized as a whole general kind of framework for thinking. Just like about the blind things. man with the elephant, you're getting different pieces of yeah, how the. Yeah, one well, just saw that it takes time to see the generality of the principle, right? And and it, it's just uh, really changed the way. It's actually changed completely the way we tend to look at quantum effects in matter. And there's been a huge uh, extra uh, impetus coming from people with ideas in, in so-called quantum, quantum information. So there's been coming together of, a, of, of, of different strands which have led to a rather a very exciting yeah. way. It's, it's difficult to explain how excited people have become. I mean, it's a, obviously quantum mechanics is something incredibly difficult to explain to people because it's against, it's, it's, it doesn't seem to agree with our, our, the way we our see the world around it, yeah. right? But uh, uh, it's just amazing how, how excited young people have become. And it, it, it's just such a, uh, it's just such a, uh, yeah, let's, I'd big, like to spend right? the last yeah. few minutes yeah. talking just a little bit about that. You know, so obviously, a complicated problem, set of problems, yeah. a long journey to find things out. How do you know? So, for, for people in the audience, how, how do you? How did you think about what would be an interesting problem to solve? You found something, and you pursued it. How, how did you? How did you know? Well, I think you. You come across something if, if once you under, if you see you can understand something in some simpler way than mm -hmm. see some general some underlying principle to understand it then then some blinkers come down from your eyes and you actually see that you can uh, understand things before you were just describing something right and uh, 
the more one makes, one gets to a, physicists believe that um, the true explanation of the world is simple. Uh -huh. <laughs> or at least if you could, of course, if you could reduce it down to something that looks beautiful mathematically and simple, you, you feel that's most likely the right answer, right? And so yeah, physicists what's, ha like that. what's happened with this is that a whole lot of apparently unrelated and different sorts of things have got, one can now see a common framework that you understand these all as different examples of, mm -hmm. of a general principle. And so that's what's really excited people about this topological matter. It's, 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 got a, it, it's conceptually very simple in some sense, when, uh, because mathematics, of course, is simple. Uh, in the end looks for simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to actually understand, you can understand some physical reality and see that mathematics, topology is a very well-developed uh, subject mathematically, yeah. right? You, so suddenly it was a surprise that you could take a piece of mathematics which was developed for completely other reasons and, and apply it to understanding uh, basic fundamentally properties worse. of, of, yeah. of, of Quantum, effects, quantum matter, basically. So I'd like to also ask you about this insight. You mentioned that you found one kind of uh, properties at one time in yeah. the 80s, and then another, and you didn't realize they were connected until later. How, yeah. how, did, how did you uh, come to understand that? Uh, probably other people understood other people that. Did. They understand that the, the, the general, the, these both were systems which had interesting things going on at the edge, right? And that turned out, and there were some, uh, topological ideas were floating around in both of mm -hmm. these two things. And uh, uh, it was probably only when the three-dimensional extensions happened, when it was generalized and these, a lot more co topological matter was found, that then people started making a systematic classification. Mm -hmm. And it turns out uh, what I found in 1980 is somehow the, the simplest, it's something like the hydrogen atom of topological mm -hmm. matter. It's the simplest, the, the, the most basic example. And then the later thing turns out it was a generalization of uh, something called the, the quantum Hall effect, which is a system which has signals that go around one way around the edge. Right, like we were talking about before. And uh, this has now been demonstrated similar. It's, in, 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 it's been done first with electrons, but then there was the same principle applied to some materials used for, for light, so-called photonic crystals. People have been trying mm -hmm. to to manipulate the flow of light using uh, kind of periodic structures like, like electrons in crystals. And, and, and uh, so it's surprising how the same basic kind of principle gets extended to very different things. things. It's been seen in, in, in gases of cold atoms. It's been seen in light. Yeah. Uh, so if I could generalize yeah. a little, if you don't mind, just yeah. for, the, for people who are listening. So it sounds like, all right, you've, you found, you found something interesting. You followed that interest. Yeah. You shared your findings yes. the way people in science do. Yeah. Other people built on that eventually found the framework. So it sounds to me like, I mean, on the one hand, you have to be kind of willing, willing to be wrong, go, yes, go, going yeah. forward and exploring something. Yeah. Um, and science, it seems like a lot of times you're trying something and you might be wrong. Well, uh, but you, you try it anyway. That's the, uh, one of the points of... Of, of working on it, but then it seems like collaboration is really important ultimately too to find the broader picture. Yeah, I think one needs to, you know, I mean, science, physics, theoretical physics, is a very social subject. Mm -hmm. uh, it really, I mean, there's this view of Einstein was sitting in his uh, patent office desk in, in in Zurich, working out things by himself. Well, a, a few times that happens, but really. We spend our time kind of fighting with each other or, or chat, discussing. I think through uh, through through getting together and discussing and 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 uh, trying to say my theory is better than your theory or whatever or explaining it. We it's a it, there's a there's both competition and collaboration. But I don't think it, 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 you know it's a very kind of it's a very cool subject really and. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, it's a, there's a barrier to getting into it. Well, you uh, need a little math. I need a little yeah. math. Uh, but <laughs> um, but there's, there's something for everyone there. There's experimentalists. There's, there's people who do very fancy and math. And there are people there's who maybe builders. apply it. Yes. Right. And, uh, um, so I think um, I, I, I love hearing what you're talking about. I think we're just about out of time. Yeah. But I, I'd just like to say, just in terms of some concluding thoughts, I'm really always kind of struck by how Things that are very, very small can have very, very large impacts, and how uh, you know very large impacts. So we're we're, we're looking at uh, quantum mechanics, 
but also could be ultimately potentially used for solving very large problem sets yeah. with um, quantum computing, perhaps. But maybe, maybe it will lead us down even uh, many other trails because it's just really interesting yeah. to understand how the world works. And I think that's one of the great, wonderful things about science. I'm also struck by the competition and collaboration aspects. So I guess, I guess the thing I'd like to leave everybody with is you know, to, to draw inspiration from kind of wild ideas sometime, mm -hmm. to be willing to share them. And you might have to wrestle with people a little bit to, to get mm -hmm. them through. But I, I really enjoyed learning about, uh, about your work. Thank you very much, Thank you. Dr. Halding. Thank you.